Yeah, good morning, so you already know who I am. So let's get started, let's see. So the idea is, uh, oh, my thing is disclaimer, so some of the images have been created by myself, and the other one I've taken from Wikipedia, so they it's licensed just that way. Uh, then how we write something, so I just took this uh, uh, piece of code, you don't need to copy it because I put it on GitHub to find the link on the last page. But we just create some uh, swing stuff and then we can write fix the lines like this. And with that we are able to create images. So that's what we uh, do. So let's, uh, let's make a picture of a function. So one challenge that we uh, immediately uh, come across when we work with this is, well, sometimes we have exceptions. When you have functions that we run out of ranges, we get division by zero, whatever you like and then you get half an image and it crashes there. So that's what we don't want. What we really want is just ignore them. It's just what I find and you don't want to deal with exceptions. So catch them, ignore them. That's the uh, way. Uh, then the next thing that we need to think is we want to create an image. So we create a function and we run it on the x-axis and we ignore the y. And then we just get things like this and we add some color is like this, or if we don't, then like this, you can shift kind of the color channels, and we get colors. So uh, then uh, that's kind of our naive approach, that we have like three functions for uh, each of the RGBs. It's um, red, um, green, and uh, blue, and then we create these channels, and then we make color out of it and try to work with it. So where does this lead? And basically, we end up with things like this, for example, when we try around, because then we uh, are in this range from 0 to 255, we are good, and then some, suddenly we leave it, then we have to deal with it somehow, and then we get rough edges, or we get blacked, because it's out of range, we make it black or white or whatever. Uh, so we have to think of ways that we constrain our things in, in the uh, area where we are good. And this is uh, something we don't want to really program each time. Now I have to write a function that remains in this area, but we try to get a generic way of, of being good with that because, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's always the same and we should get rid of this goal and put it in the library. So, how can we do it? There's these two functions that look a little bit similar and you can find others that are the same, but basically what they do is when you put in anything from minus infinity to plus infinity, you get something out between minus one and plus one. And then you shift it a little bit, multiply a little bit, and then you are from zero to one five, and that works. So one is arctangent, and the other one is tangent hyperbolicus. The funny thing is if you get rid of the hyperbolicus, it's just one is the inverse of the other, but that's, uh, that's that, because hyperbole tangent is like that. And with that you can do things. And so for example, when you uh, try it, you get something like this. It's kind of black, then smoothly goes to white, and then it's white. If you just have all the channels the same. Another thing that we are very familiar with, is very IT oriented, but why not, we are using computers here actually, is this uh, bitwise AND. So if you use bitwise AND, you can just constrain it to 0 to 255. And actually it's something that you know even in uh, electronics, give this uh, saw-like um, current. Yeah, you can create something like that. And you have, uh, it's a thing that exists. Of course, it's a little bit smoothened in real life, but here we have really this uh, triangular shape. <coughs> and if you use something like that, and then you shift the three colors a little bit, you get this. So it's, it's a possibility. Then another thing that works really well is the sine. Sine, of course, is the same. And so you just have this wave, and you put in the, your, your whatever value, and you always, whatever you do, you get something between 0 and 1, then you 
add one, multiply with 127.5, and then move it to an integer. <coughs> so if you run this on the x-axis for all colors the same, you basically get something like this, where uh, it gets black and white smoothly, like that. So that's already something we can work it, but it's not, we didn't, didn't get us anywhere. Now the next challenge that we have is if we consider these three channels of color, red, blue, and, and green, and we can just make them independently. And if we do that, then we get like three different pictures. Maybe it's interesting, but it's probably not what we really want because they are kind of too independent. And we want them to be a little bit more correlated, but of course not the same, but if, if we have them all the same, then it's, just, then it's just black and white. But it's kind of necessary to find the right balance there. So here is another example there. I already put in the stuff that I uh, created for the three colors into the sine function. So we have the waves but we have three different kind of waves for each color. So they are still three totally independent pictures and we want them to be, become one picture. So here's other uh, ways where we had uh, uh, three, uh, actually this time we had three very similar functions that they were just parameterized differently. And then you see it's still not uh, giving you one picture but we are getting closer. So uh, now is the question, how can we deal with these three uh, functions, for the three colors, and make them be, be colorful, but still uh, be uh, not too far away? So what I came up with is uh, one possible approach, which I like using. Uh, you think of electricity. When you have these uh, big cables that you see everywhere in the country, if they are not underground, there are three, um, three, a multiple of three of wires, and each of them is a phase, and they are each following a sine wave, and if you add them up, all these three, they come up to zero, and you have the, this is the pattern how our electricity systems work in this world. And there, you, there we go, we have these three shifted uh, curves, and we use one for each color channel, and that actually is what I mostly did. So we come up with this, this is the x-axis, and if we just go there, then it's So you see um, actually waves out of movement. <coughs> or if you like mathematics, you can see the, the waves kind of, the intensity of the waves expresses the derivative of the function of the show. Yeah. So then we come to the next challenge, that is actually quite a big uh, challenge as well in this area. Uh, when you play around, then you get most of the time something like this, where it's too much activity and you, when you look very closely, then you see, oh yeah, there's different kind of uh, uh, colors in the picture, but if you look at it from distance, then it's just um, rough. Uh, area with different colors is something that we're used to because if you look at the ceiling here it's like that it's not simply red but it's rough yeah so you can have rough, create roughness but if you have rough, roughness by itself it's for us like one color so that's too fast kind of yeah because it's oscillating so far that we don't see uh, real structures and the other opposite thing is if we have like too slow, so it's just uh, <coughs> one color and it only changes so little between left and right side of the picture that it's not interesting either. So we have to kind of get into the right area where we get something interesting. So let's see what things could work. One thing that is a possibility, you take like one spot in the picture and then you um, in the center, this is the kind of the main point, and then each point of this uh, picture, you find the angle and the radius. So you these polar coordinates, and then you can just use a function on the angle. 
And in this case, I kind of multiply the angle by something, and then automatically we take the sign. So if we have a kind of multiple of six or something like that, or 12, whatever, you get something like this. And depending on the factor, you get more or less these waves. So that's uh, something that works. And here we see that uh, you can make it not work, because if you take a bad factor, then you get something like a rough. Uh, rough line where it doesn't match, you see it. Well, you see it, yeah. So there you have to think, if you want to avoid this, you really have to think what kind of factor works out. So here we did the same thing with the several spots, and then we just added the <coughs> angles and calculated from that with two or three spots. So it's kind of, if you like, electric fields or so, maybe you have two negative fields or three <coughs> negative fields and something like that. And the same can be done with the radius. So here we take the radius as a function and then we get circles. And now we want to have two spots and work with the uh, distance to the two spots, so we add them. And the first one are ellipses, because that's exactly the definition and comes out like that. And the other one, three points, is something that I don't know a word for, but it exists on this picture at least. So you can try with it. And then we say, okay, why add? Why not multiply? So we can multiply, we get something of it. It's, it's there, whatever you call it. Or you can XOR it, then you get totally different world because the XORing you always get these uh, hard um, lines to, to between the areas, so it's a typical shape that you get there. And then now let's try to put this together. So uh, we can put in radius and angle, and then we can create spirits. And depending on the parameters, we get more or less. Uh, uh, smaller or bigger spirits. <coughs> and now, uh, something we can also do is add some uh, microstructure to it. So in the first case, I just added a um, small sign with a high uh, oscillation with a small factor, so you basically see the big spiral, but if you look closely, you see a little bit of waves with a smaller, uh, with a higher frequency on it. Or here I put in a rough function, uh, whatever you like, but these are easy to find <laughs> because it's what you get most of the time anyway. And then you can get, get this a little bit more interesting. And the next thing that we did, uh, that we can do is like apply functions to radius and uh, uh, angle. So here I applied kind of sign to either the angle or the uh, radius, and then you get something like, whoosh. yeah. So that's a little bit more <laughs> interesting. And then sometimes uh, you like like to get something like nets, yeah, like fish or net, or something like that. And this is actually possible to do with the uh, greatest common divider because greatest common divisor between two numbers is usually one, if they are, um, uh, one of them is odd and one is even, and if both of them are even, then it's already two, and then you see like a half, of, no, three quarters of the area is like this one color, and then the rest is a different kind of blue. So if you want something like that included, you can use this function. Yeah, and um, this is something that I did like polynomials of degree 3, so I multiplied the x, uh, the x to the power of 3, and y to the power of 3, and x times y squared, or something like that. And of course you can always, you always have to think of the scaling, you always have to <coughs> add in, to put in factors um, before the sign and after the sign and, 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 and these things. And depending on these factors, the frequency gets so high that it's like all gray or that it's all one color. You kind of have to get into the interesting area again. 
but uh, you often get these kind of uh, uh, bubbles. Yeah, and now then something that we usually try to do, and then we have to think how do we achieve it with this pattern, we plot functions. Yeah, that's what you saw on the one of the first slides, I showed you the curve of the sign, and now we want to plot it. So how do we do that if we want something like that? And the way is actually we take sine of x minus y. And if we have that, that goes to zero when they are the same. And then, of course, because after all, we apply sign to the whole difference anyway, uh, then we get again and again the same thing. So it repeats itself. But one of them is the original where we really go through zero. And there you see the curve. So one of them plotted the sine, and one of them plotted the tangent. So you can do that and get shapes that you know and put them in to, to create something. And here you have the possibility to make it a little bit more interesting by taking the sign of um, this difference. So it's a little bit more dynamic, in some cases it's repeating more frequently and then less frequently, more frequently. So that's a way to get something more interesting. And here we have like uh, combined the x and the y axis. So I just create um, x is the sine of y and y is the sine of x. And these two graphs <coughs> they, they kind of combined. And in this case, they were added. And here we have uh, uh, Pyta the Pythagoras taken of them. So it's what you take when you have the triangle. You take the diagonal different way of combining two values or then you can multiply them and then you get something uh, like this. <coughs> Multiplying is always getting quite weird, weird to the structure so it's quite interesting. You get very uh, different outcomes from what you put in. And then when you put in more complex functions, combine all these things and you can create things like this. Yeah. So uh, that's the thing uh, that you can do. Just some ideas to add on to this. You can add like an additional <coughs> darken things that you say, okay, you create something like this, but you want to darken certain areas more or less. And just another approach that's also possible to use that's um, Similarly useful is this Riemann sphere. So you have this area and you put a sphere that is lying, so the center of the sphere is in the center of your um, uh, coordinate system. And then you kind of combine the north pole of the sphere with the point that you have on the um, coordinate system. And where it dissects the sphere, this is the point of the sphere that you mean. And then this sphere is three-dimensional, so you have like uh, already a way to con uh, transform it to RGB. For example, you can say the north and south pole are red, and when it's in the center, it's um, not red. And then you can kind of attach values to create colors from that. And just, uh, just another way where you get more saturation is that you use, instead of the electricity in three phases, you use the HSV model and then you get just more saturated uh, colors from the same input and it looks more like uh, plastic toys or something like that. Yeah, so that's basically the idea. So the idea is I put in the uh, source code on uh, GitHub. It's more or less something to play around with and I have a lot of fun to uh, study uh, like uh, what you can do with closure and what you can, how you can combine these uh, functions and uh, yeah, it helps you understand closure. It helps you understand the functions that you play around with, and it's a lot of fun. <coughs> so that's it. So the question is, if you have questions. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Does anybody have any questions? Carl, big round of applause, please.
Uh, we have a few questions. Carl, uh, yes, uh, here we go. No closer. Hi, great talk, thank you very much. Um, do you think it's fast enough to potentially animate through functions? Well, uh, I, I just run on kind of my own computer and then I have like one um, megabyte of um, one, one million of pixels and it runs like a few seconds. So if you want to animate, you have to uh, think a little bit more. But I guess you can already parallelize. You can create uh, independent sections. So you make one in one second, but it's still not fast enough. But if you uh, really uh, invest in one special uh, function, you can probably make use of uh, more optimizations and get it to an area where you animate. But that would be an interesting challenge. But I think it's kind of doable when you have reasonably uh, simple function and you understand them well enough and you make use of like neighboring pixels are created uh, using information from the previous one instead of just calculating all of them from scratch. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? No, everybody wants to go for a coffee break, tea break. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Carl. Thank you.